What are the special elements which go together to make a sincere repentance? There are four things required. Number one, a person should realize the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his power and his greatness, that if he wants to punish you, he can punish you immediately. So this will make a person repent. And we should not look at the minuteness of our sin. We should look at the greatness, forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nuh, chapter number 71, verse number 13 and 14, Allah says, that what has happened to you? Don't you have hope in the kindness and forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he created you in different stages? So if you know the mightiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's going to forgive you, inshallah you'll repent. Number two, everyone should realize that one day we're going to die and you're going to go to the grave. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number three, verse number 185, Kullu nafsin zaykatul maut. Every soul shall have a taste of death. And on the day of judgment shall be the full recompense. That means everyone has to die. And the final hisab kitab, the final recompense, will be on the day of judgment. And Allah says in the Quran in Surah Luqman, chapter number 31, verse number 34, Allah says that no one knows what will he earn tomorrow. And no one knows in which land will he die. So we have to realize that everyone has to die. And we don't know when will that time come. So that will help us in repenting as soon as possible. We don't know when is our last hour. The third point is that all the rewards for this world and the akhirah is based on your deeds for your akhirah. What you're going to do for your akhirah, the deeds for your akhirah will actually reward you in this world and the akhirah. That's very important. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Fatih, chapter 35, verse number 5, that the promise of Allah is true. And let not this present world deceive you, and let not the chief deceiver deceive you against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means we have to be careful that all our acts and deeds should basically target about the akhirah, about the hereafter. And there's a hadith mentioned in Tirmidhi, hadith number 2320, where the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that this world for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is equivalent to the wing of a fly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not allow a disbeliever even to have a handful of water from it. This world, in comparison to the hereafter, is like a wing of a fly, and you would not allow a disbeliever even to have a handful of water. A similar message is given in Say Muslim, volume number four, in the book of Paradise, hadith number 6483, where the beloved Prophet said that in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this world, as compared to the hereafter, is like a person putting his finger, the forefinger, into the ocean. And when he gets it out, whatever is stuck to the forefinger is like the present world. The present world, just hardly some little water that gets stuck to the forefinger, that's equivalent as compared to the mighty ocean that is the hereafter. So, so little is the significance of this world as compared to the hereafter. So, therefore, we should realize that this life is a test for the hereafter. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Mulk, chapter number 6 and verse number 2, Allah zikhlaq al mawta wal hayata. It is Allah who has created death and life to test which of his good and deeds. The fourth point is that human beings should realize that the punishment can be expedient in this world. And whatever punishment they get, it is because of their sin. Whatever calamity takes place in this, it is basically for their sin. As Allah says in Surah Zukhruf, chapter number 43, Verse number 76, that no wise shall we be unjust to them, but it is they who are being unjust to themselves. So these four points are very important to be remembered.